Hey lovelies, it's Kate. Welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build and welcome to Bunk Beds because we got a free base game update. Bunk Beds are now part of the Sims 4 base game and I decided to build a smaller house and this was actually a coincidence. I mean I knew that Bunk Beds were coming but I just wanted to build something smaller for a change because anyone who's been around here for a while knows that every now and then I sprinkle a small or tiny build into the mix and that's what I did. I just felt like building a smaller house. I just didn't want to work on another mansion for once and then while building this I noticed hey bunk beds are indeed coming and I realized that it would be perfect to add some bunk beds to this so I built this before the update like this part of the build but later on I'm going to add some bunk beds and I had so much fun working on this. I usually prefer to build mansions but when you work on a smaller build or more compact build you can just put so much time into adding details and working on this was really really fun and I just hope that you all enjoy a different build for a change. So a couple of weeks ago, I think, I don't even know when, I built this mountain cabin that had this hourglass shaped pool and I said in this speed build that Sadie had sent me a picture from the Simpsons tapped out game and that she had to think of me and then based on this picture I created the mansion and actually she had also sent another picture my way of a really small kind of modern house and I based this house here on this picture but I think it's quite different in a way I was just inspired by the skylight and all that and also these blue windows I'm going to use the windows from Spotify for this as you will see so I created the skylight and I had made a tutorial about this like last year or the year before I don't even remember but I made a tutorial about this it's down below in the description box like the tutorial playlist so if you want to learn how to do this step by step you can totally check this tutorial out so I wanted to create the skylight and at first I wanted to create another level on top so I, I just built this chimney as you just saw and I, at first I wanted to add another room and then another half gabled roof on top but then I realized that the whole build would be too tall and disproportional it just wouldn't look right so I just ended up adding some debug wood planks so I could hide the gap between the chimney and the roof I don't know it was confusing but I ended up using lots of debug wood planks I used the wonderful tool mod by the even more wonderful Tristop Maxi to rotate all these objects and as you can see down there I placed a iron living glass floor and the reason why I did that is I pulled out the eaves of the glass roof so I have this look so I have the glass but the main part of the roof is hidden inside the other roof so of course the floor is not turning translucent the way it's supposed to be when you place a, a glass roof so I had to use a little trick and I simply placed an I don't live in glass floor inside there I had to rescale it using tool because the size wasn't perfect and then I just kept working on the build. I used these Ecoli style wall decorations in the front and I then decided to have a flat roof and I used some some numbers from the gallery, no CC gallery art, to have this kind of modern look. I love this when you have like a house number in the front. And also I added these columns which are from Eco Lifestyle I think. I just thought that they would look perfect with this wall decoration and just this look. It adds more wood but I was running into a couple of problems. So in case you had no idea, you know how you can make an object bigger. Like you press a certain key on your keyboard. It depends which key like depending on your keyboard layout and language. So you press this key and you make an object bigger and you can use this exact same key to increase the height of a column. Usually you can just click on this little arrow but sometimes or at some point it's telling you nope maximum height reached I don't know it's giving you some type of error message and when this happens you can't make a column taller but when you press on the key for making stuff bigger you can make it even higher and you can make them ridiculously tall in some cases and that's what I did here like I couldn't use the arrow but I could increase the height by pressing this key the problem is sometimes when you make a change to the house like building a wall or removing a wall 
adding a foundation just anything it snaps back and this is what happened here over and over again but i still changed it back because while i was working on the exterior i wanted to see what it looks like in combination with the high column like a like the whole composition basically so in case you're noticing that i'm changing it back and back and back i'm not confused i just wanted to look at the whole thing the whole complete composition so i was doing that but this is like my little word of advice in case you had no idea. You can use this key to make your columns taller. I learned this on Twitter, like I think a couple of months ago. I think it was Kalino who tweeted about this and it's just amazing. I love this so much. And sometimes it's so frustrating when you want to have a certain look, you want to have a super tall column and you can't make it higher. And I also don't think that it always snaps back. It just depends where you use it, how you use it. So when you make it higher, you Usually it should stay this way but I've been running into this problem lately a lot like whenever I'm making it higher it snaps back I have no idea also stairs are still kind of buggy I talked about this before and it happened again like in on the inside in this build I added some stairs and they just kind of they're just so buggy like when you add them they just I can't even explain it it's super weird sometimes they disappear sometimes they're not really properly connected to the platform anymore again if this happens if you download this build then you might have to reattach the stairs I don't know it's some weird bug stairs have have been acting super weird lately and I just want to give this little disclaimer because um yeah in case you're wondering what's going on with the stairs and all that but let's talk about the big news. We finally have bunk beds in The Sims 4. So you only have to update your game. Bunk beds are not tied to a specific pack or anything. You only need the base game. You only have to update your game. It's free and we all have bunk beds now, which is wonderful. This is something that has been requested for such a long time. And I think it's something that would have been perfect for parenthood and also tiny living for parenthood, obviously, because of the whole theme of the pack. But when it comes to tiny living, it's a great pack. There is so much cool furniture in this pack, but back then I also criticized this. I would have loved to see something in tiny living that makes it actually easier to build tiny houses, something that really saves space. So bunk beds would have been perfect for this, but now we finally got them. I mean, I'm happy that we now have them and of course we still use parenthood and tiny living. So finally we can just use the bunk beds for, for like builds which have this kind of theme kind of. I like them. I'm happy that they have arrived, but there is unfortunately a slight problem. I haven't looked into this completely yet, but I've read a couple of things on Twitter. I've also used them. As you will see later in this build, I'm going to use them for the kids' rooms. So there are two types of bunk beds in this game now. We have like a regular bunk bed where you have one bed at the bottom, then one at the top, like a regular bunk bed. And then there's one where you only have a bed at the top. So why would you use a bed like this, where you only have a bed at the top? You would use it to save space. So you could place a desk below, a small sofa, just anything. This is also what people are doing in real life. Like they use these beds or buy these beds so they can save space and they can place something below. You don't want to have some empty space below. It doesn't make sense most of the time. So of course, we now also all want to place something below probably like a desk. The problem is this is not what we are supposed to do apparently. You need the move objects G to place anything below. So a desk or something doesn't just uh, snap to the bed or anything. You have to use move objects otherwise you won't be able to place anything below. And then when you do apparently you have to be very specific with how and where you place it. Otherwise the bed on top isn't functional anymore so the object that you place below the bed is kind of blocking the bed apparently as you will see later in this video i'm going to build a desk below the bed and this was before playtesting and before i knew about this i was just jumping in game after the update and i was working on this build so I had no idea yet, so I'm going to playtest this and there seems to be a sweet spot where you have to place the desk so it works and I'm going to find the sweet spot for you guys for this build. So there will be a desk below the bed and it will be functional, but I'm just kind of bummed out that we have to 
figure this out. I mean, as I said, for me, the only reason to have a bed like this is to place something below. You don't have a bunk bed with empty space below to just have nothing there. Also for tiny living, for example, we could use so much space. Like when you look at these really beautiful tiny builds that people create out there, like Miss Griffey, for example, it's absolutely mind blowing how these summers create these beautiful tiny builds and they squeeze so much stuff into a tiny space it's still functional it looks absolutely gorgeous and when you think of this you could probably build a whole kitchen below there <laughs> as long as it's functional which is kind of difficult as i said because of the bed personally i don't want to have a kitchen below my bed like <laughs> but in real life it's weird but if you want to have a really crazy tiny build in this game why not but yeah this is kind of the main concern but other than that, it's perfect. We got the update, it's free, we have bunk beds and especially the regular bunk bed is probably really exciting. I feel like the one with only a bed on top is kind of more for, for saving space and if you want to be a bit creative, having a desk below anything, just, I don't know, a really cluttered look. But then again, the regular bunk bed is just perfect for any type of kids room. We can really save a lot of space. And sometimes my bedrooms aren't that big because I use so much space for landscaping, for example. And now I can just use bunk beds and I will have a lot of space for a lot of kids. And it's, yeah, I love bunk beds. I think it's great. I just wanted to mention this and I'm going to look into this after recording this video. Then I will just play around with it. Maybe it's not as bad, but I wish things would be a bit different. But it's a, a amazing free update, so I'm not going to complain. I just wanted to just kind of talk about all the news surrounding the bunk beds and I'm sure that you are all really excited about this as well just as excited as I am but yeah just be very careful when you place some stuff below the bunk beds also better built by by Tristan Maxi is broken and when I updated my game what I always do is I know that you are kind of not supposed to do this but I always just activate my mods again and then I just play. And most of the time or every time this worked for me, I was never <laughs> running into a lot of problems with this. But in this case, I just started my game after the update. I activated mods and then I wanted to build and I just couldn't build. Like when I picked something from the build by, it just wasn't visible. Like I couldn't pick it. It was really weird. I thought, okay, a mod is probably causing this. It has to be updated. So I removed my mods folder and then it was working. And then I read on Twitter that it's built by, uh, better built by. And uh, Tristan Maxi tweeted that he's going to update it later today, I think. And yeah, make sure to update your mods in case you are running into the same problem and in case you're using Better Build By by Trist Maxi, head to his Patreon website. I think it's on his Patreon probably. Just update your Better Build By <laughs> because this is what's causing it. So yeah, it's time to update all the mods, MC Command Center as well probably, and then everything is all right. Also, I quickly checked this actually. When you use a one tile, big desk like the small ones from tiny living and parenthood for example it works as long as you find the correct position and i think it should also work when you're using a regular desk but i haven't figured that out yet i think you really have to use alt and move it around and then you might be able to figure it out and i just wanted to quickly mention this i'm going to really test this and then I will give you an update in another video about this. But let's talk about this interior here because I'm furnishing and I have to say I'm super proud of myself. I'm not the best when it comes to furnishing, but I put all my love into this and I really wanted to make this look cluttered and I really wanted to use the space as much as possible. This was built on a 30 by 20 lot, as I said. And there are three bedrooms in total and then we have this whole living area. So on this side of the build, there is the complete living area. So the living room, the dining room, the kitchen and an office. And then there will be three bedrooms on the other side of the lot. And furnishing this was just so much fun because I tried to be creative with this. I used so much clutter. Like, I mean, it's not like super cluttered. There are builders who use clutter all the time, but like for my standards, there is a lot of stuff going on. And here I'm using a small desk. This is what I meant. Like one of those small desks, these one tile white desks you can use 
these without a lot of problems below the bunk beds. So I just built this corner sofa using a sofa from my first pet stuff. A pack that not everyone likes. Like my first pet stuff in Trinity Two are like the most controversial packs probably, but they have some great stuff in it. I always say this, but it really is this way like there's so much great stuff in these packs so i created this corner sofa and these curtains or blinds are from snowy escape and so are the counters so i used a lot of stuff from this pack and it's like super wooden super monochrome in a way like there's just a lot of brown going on but for some reason it totally works out i just love how this turned out I also tried to be creative when it came to the whole kitchen counter situation. I combined these counters with some um, base game shelves and then I also used this wall decoration from Dine Out. You just saw this and here I built some type of really small bathroom like for guests or something and I squeezed in the shower, the toilet and the sink and what's super weird I have to admit I placed the toilet roll <laughs> above the toilet but there was just no space left because of the windows so I just tried to make it work I guess which was super fun like again it's always fun to figure this out like I don't like to work on tiny builds all the time and this isn't tiny also but like having to figure out where to place something and to make it work it is fun and here I built a some type of shelf thingy I used some base game shelves as you can see here and these columns are from the back and just for decorative purposes, sometimes in real life you see island counters which have this kind of look and then I just placed some clutter on top and into plant, just different things, just so it looks fancy and beautiful and I had to move the counter at the bottom so this wouldn't like snap to the counter. I also downloaded the red shelf again but I didn't really use it here. I have to get comfortable using the shelf. The cool thing is you can use it to place clutter in in all kinds of ways. Like this shelf has so many slots and it's perfect for cluttering. And the cool thing is you can use it and then you remove it. So when you upload your build, it's CC free because you don't upload the shelf to the gallery kind of. So you just remove the shelf before uploading, which is wonderful. And I want to get more comfortable using this shelf and just figuring things out. And here I'm working on the floor plan to include more bedrooms, which was kind of confusing because this part of the build is diagonal. And then when you want to build walls, it's always super confusing. And also sometimes when you've raised the platform in a build, when you section off different rooms like I'm doing here, the platform is kind of raising in different areas <laughs> and then it's removing stuff. So this was confusing as well. I was also able to add another bathroom. So this one is bigger. So this is kind of the regular bathroom and the other one is for guests or just, I mean, of course, any sim can use it. But like this was my idea. So there are two bathrooms and three bath bedrooms and I'm going to add bunk beds as I said. So technically there's enough space for five sims actually because we have the bunk bed, then another bunk bed with only one bed and then a double bed in the regular master bedroom. So you could squeeze a lot of sims into this relatively small house. And let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see more of these houses like not only mansions but sometimes a house like this if you enjoy to see the process or maybe you only like to have them in the gallery to download them or do you like to see them in a video or do you prefer mansions and crazy stuff or, or also something like this I don't know just let me know in the comments down below if you like this kind of variety or, or not and I don't know just leave a comment down below because I always love to hear your feedback and to just know what you enjoy and all that so I really appreciate whenever you just leave a comment like this so I just I personally would like to have more variety here because mansions are fun but this year is also a lot of fun. So here you see the bunk bed and here the other one so I'm going to use this bunk bed to place a desk as you can see here and this one is functional. I checked this but here I'm also placing some other stuff below and I don't know if this in this specific case is blocking the bed in which case I'm going to remove it. I just did another test <laughs> where I just built the bed and the desk and another desk so I was just having some type of testing session going on but here this specific build 
I didn't play test it yet. I'm going to do this before uploading, of course. And I used this TV from Tiny Living. So it's a combination of a TV, a bookshelf and a stereo, which is perfect. And then I first wanted to use this room to use the bunk beds, but then I ended up using another room for this because I noticed that the other room is much smaller so it totally made sense to just use the bunk beds over there and to turn this one into the main bedroom into the master bedroom kind of so that's what I eventually decided to do and if you want to I can also make some type of in-depth review and show how to place stuff below the bunk beds and how to activate the move object sheet and all these things this might be more interesting for beginners probably but again just let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see this I have to really play around with this like checking out what's going on in depth I just furnished this after the update so I will still have to take a closer look at this and this video is actually slowly coming to an end thank you so much for watching here you can see some screenshots this build is available in the gallery and the tray files are available on my patreon so you can just grab this from the gallery if you would like to and now it's time to thank my wonderful emerald patreons a big big thank you to my patrons Britta1607, Charlotte, Molly, Quinn Ring, Riel Morrison, Shamanique Jefferson, Shanna McClam and Sim Sadie. Thank you so much for being my Emerald Patreons. It means the world to me. And also again, I'm so sorry if I pronounce any name wrong. I'm doing my best here. And of course, also a big thank you to all my other Patreons and to anyone who watches this, who supports me. Thank you for being here, for, for just being you and for being in my community. I love all of you and you are all the best. Your support means the world to me. And yeah, thank you so much for watching as i said you can grab this from the gallery and i love you all so much i hope you have the best day ever and i hope to see you in the next video bye bye